Hi, it's Mike with TopDaddies.com, and today we're with a friend of mine, uh, Ben, from uh, Dandy Brewery. Thanks for uh, having me in your brewery. Yeah, thanks for inviting me on the show, on, <laughs> on the site. Yeah. No problem, no problem. Well, tell me, uh, you have a brewery, and it's called Dandy Brewery. What, what do you guys do? Uh, yeah, so we're a nano brewery in Calgary, which means we have a very limited production volume. So most microbreweries that you'll hear about in the big craft beer boom will do about twice as much as we can do in a month in one day. So wow. we really focus on small batches, uh, really hands-on production beer. So it really takes craft beer to the next level. So it, we're, uh, yeah, we're in Calgary and loving being in the city. And how are your beers different? Uh, our beers different that they're all uh, bottled conditions. So instead of filtering out the yeast and <clears throat> sediment before we bottle and just forcing CO2 into it, we leave the yeast in the bottle and it carbonates it all naturally. So it's a live ferment in there um, and it really allows the flavors to develop over time. And uh, Give, just bring sort of the beer to the next level. And you've got a couple of different flavors here. What, uh, what do you have? Yeah, so here we have four of our beers. At any given time, we usually have five or six on the go. Um, we have our uh, Oyster Stout, which <clears throat> has been one of our more popular styles. Uh, no oysters in it. It's uh, a style to be drinking with oysters. So ah. it's, a, it's a fairly sweet, um, light-bodied stout. Next to that, we have our Sour. Uh, Ode Byron. It's a brown sour ale. This is the first one we've done from the sour. It's a really up-and-coming style in beer that's really gained popularity in the last year. Uh, this is in our Dandy edition, which uh, we only make 200 bottles and they're hand-numbered, hand-written on what they are, and they're only available out of the brewery, and when they're gone, they're gone, and that's it. Next to that, we have our Bright Young Things, which is our English summer ale. Uh, it's a really just light drinking, fruity, sort of nice, easy drinking patio crusher, as I like to call it. Really great on a hot day. And then beside that, we have our limited edition Smoke Boss, which is a smoked beer. So it's something for everybody. Oh, that's perfect. Now, you're also a dad. Yes. How many kids do you have? I have two. I have a one-year-old and a five-year-old. So running a business with kids, uh, you're, you're also a stay-at-home dad, and you run a business at the same time. So tell yeah. me about being a stay stay-at-home dad. Yeah, stay being a stay-at-home dad is probably the best decision I've ever made. Um, after our first kid, my wife had taken all of the uh, parental leave, and she really enjoyed her time, but she really enjoys her job. She really likes working. And um, so when it came around to the second child, I was really looking forward to spending more time with, with the baby uh, because I was working so much during the first child. So. I had sort of mentioned it, and then she sort of said, you know, she'd been thinking the same thing if maybe we split parental leave um, between us six months each. So she took six months, the first six months, and then in January I started on parental leave. And then when my contract came up for the next year, I was having such a good time that I decided to take, you know, another year full of parental leave. So it's uh yeah it's been great i love it what are the benefits of being a stay, a stay home dad uh well i think just the connection with the kids and 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 seeing them grow up and being there for everything um it's, it's a chance not everyone gets to take and i know a lot of people do and it's it's awesome but i think it's, it's definitely uh something that i didn't realize i was missing until i became a stay-at-home dad and then you know, our son, who's five, he was in full days, and he had one half day a week, so even just having that extra half day home with him was so great to get to know him and hang out with him and just be a part of his life was really great. So being stay-at-home dad and running a business, how do you balance all that? Uh, it's tough. I, f I think, the, like, the business was perfect timing with the business where, uh, we got our first of three or four licenses the day uh, my one-year-old was born. So the business was essentially born the exact same day as, as my child. Oh, so, wow. Uh, yeah. In, you so know, having two children take, born at the same time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> that both need a lot of care and love and, and all that. But at the same time, the breweries just sort of become part of our lives. Um, it's, I, I try not to keep it as a, this is like, 
I have to balance a block of family time and a block of work time and a, a block of you know whole family time and a block of wife time. It's it, I really try to to sort of keep everything flowing as part of one sort of organization, I guess. So I kind of getting the family involved in. The yeah, process. exactly. Um, like with a one year old, it's it's been nice. Uh, he, I'm doing a lot of sales now, less on the brewing side and a lot more on the sales and marketing and. You know, it kind of helps sometimes to have a one-year-old with you because he's, he's adorable and, <laughs> and people love him. But nothing like using your one-year-old to sell some beer. Exactly, it's great. <laughs> no, it's great. There's uh, one of the stores, one of the managers. Every time I go with him, she'll just like scoop him out of the car seat and like walk around with him for like 15 minutes, and I'll get all my work done and deal with some supervisors and get all that, and then. You know, like the one time I didn't bring him with with me to do deliveries, she was very You made no sales. Yeah, exactly. She was very <laughs> disappointed. And then she made an order like a week later. Oh, <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah. I just want to see the baby. But it's funny. Yeah, so like the balance, there's times when it can be tough. Um, but I really, I try to stay away from that sort of um, like cat categorizing things and and stuffing it into like the work-life balance box because I think sort of everything's part of life. So work, something like this, I mean, we started this brewery because we love beer, we love making beer, we love the community involved with beer. So that's like a big part of our life as well. So I don't see it as like I have to work, but I also have to take, take care of kids. It's like I love everything element sort of, of of what's going on right now in my life so it's it makes it really easy and to have everyone as a part of it is it's great if that makes sense is there anything in particular that you do to help with that balance um yeah so with being on the marketing and sales side um, as you can imagine in the, the liquor industry there's a lot of events at night and <clears throat> stuff like that or things will pop up or getting invited to events or having to go, you know, pour samples at, at bars or something like that. So that was the biggest adjustment was being, not being out every single night. So it was, you know, I started missing being at home every night because it's not fun being out every night. So I think like the, the only part that really needed a lot of work and, and that I've been very conscious of is um, not saying yes to everything and not just being like, oh, we should be there, I'll do that, or oh, we should be there, I'll do that. So whether it's talking to some of the other guys there's, who own it and it's being like, can you do that one? Or just kind of being up front with clients and stuff and saying like, look, it's you know movie pizza night. I don't miss movie pizza night. I'm going to be home. I'm not going to be there. So um, so this consciously involving your family in the decisions that you're making, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Instead of... Yeah pitting them against each other it's it's just trying to keep everyone sort of in the loop and at the same time you know for events my wife it's nice she can come to events with me and and stuff like that so and bring your one-year-old to sell some beer and bring my one-year-old <laughs> to sell some beer we had a playpen set up here for quite a while <laughs> there you go yeah soon they're going to be uh working in the back aren't yeah, they? yeah putting labels on bottles hey yeah. there you go <laughs> All right, so one last question for yeah. you. What, what's important to you as a dad? So if you, if you were to define what it means to be a top dad, what would that be? I think it's like having them be a part of your life as well. Um, so like having the baby coming with me to do deliveries. Um, you know, the kids are here a lot hanging out, and they know what I do. And, and we, I just try to keep them in the loop of what's happening, especially the five-year-old, and sharing with them when I can share with them. So sometimes, you know, we'll get invited to like a really nice brunch somewhere and they can all come and um, the five-year-old and my wife and my one-year-old can all meet everyone that I'm dealing with business day to day. So uh, instead of sort of making that divider, it's keeping everyone sort of as part of my life, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Just keeping your life as one with your family yeah. and your business and everything that you do. Yeah, because yeah. I, um, yeah, I, I think when I started being a stay-at-home dad, the hardest part are, are sort of those stigmas and, and that losing identity where it's, uh, 
I don't know if it's unique to North American culture or what, but sort of that idea that there's no such thing as a really like a lawyer who's not practicing or a doctor who's not practicing. It's like either you're a doctor or you're not being a doctor or you're a lawyer or you're not being a lawyer. And I, I mean, I'm a teacher the rest of the time. And it was like, well, I'm not a teacher anymore. So it took me a while to sort of come to terms with that. And, and then I realized more and more that like, well, I am a teacher, I'm just not teaching right now, but also I'm a dad, and that's just as great of a position, like that's just as much as a, of an identifier for me, or, or whatever, that it's, it's not, I mean, I still, you know, get the, oh, you're babysitting your kids today, sort mm. of comments, but yeah. I've become a lot more comfortable. And it's not babysitting. It's not babysitting. It's yeah. my child. Yeah. If yeah. someone wants to pay me to watch their children. <laughs> but, but yeah, no. And so sell beer. And sell beer. Yeah. They can come along <laughs> on the sales trips. It's great. Hey, there you go. There Work you go. Place. Well, Ben, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, you know, for more interviews, check out topdaddies.com. And, of course, you've got to check out Dandy Brewery. Is there a website they can go to? Yeah, uh, www.thedandybrewingcompany.com. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or we're across all the social medias so sounds good and of course if you're in the Calgary area check them out and come on by and try try some of these beers try the oyster stout don't worry there's no oysters in it of course it's delicious it's delicious (laughs) perfect so thanks again check out topdaddies.com for more interviews and uh, product giveaways and reviews and stuff like that and uh, also don't forget to uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook until next time